to your question you said well it's actually not a question it's a request would you please explain the process of salvaging a document and the reasoning behind the process well i see a period at the end so if it was a question it would be a question mark correct this is a grammar channel so i'm talking grammar here so if we would put a question mark at the end of that would i please explain the process Yes, in a general sense, I would. But of course, I'm not going to share specific mechanics because that wouldn't be safe to do. Because I don't know your knowledge level of correct sentence structure. So when you salvage a document, have you ever read anything about maritime laws of salvage, admiralty law? Things literally to do with a ship out at sea and a derelict vessel. What happens is out at sea, there will be a vessel that perhaps runs aground or gets damaged somehow, or the crew is unable to pilot it. It runs into a rock, a storm damages it, something, but it's, it becomes unable to navigate of its own volition. So it's just sort of derelict floating out there, and it can damage another vessel. So if you are a healthy, strong vessel and you come by and you see, oh, hey, look, it looks like that that vessel is in distress or it's just floating there aimlessly, you, you go over to it, you ascertain the situation, you hook up to it, and you tow it. Now it has been salvaged because it could not uh, pilot itself, there was no pilot, there was no captain, there was no commander or master, or at least the master didn't have the capacity to uh, pilot the ship, so you have taken over now. You've commandeered it, and now you're towing it to safety so that it does not harm any other vessels and it does not create shipwrecks. The same principle applies to grammatical derelict vessels in the fiction system. Vessels such as uh, the all caps name, you could apply it to anything, birth certificate, credit cards, debit cards, uh, driving licenses, all sorts of stuff. Court cases, you can apply those same basic mechanics to anything if you know how to do it and you know correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. So I've just explained to you in general terms uh, how you do it and why you do it. And I would highly recommend just looking up on Google, just looking up books on maritime laws of salvage. It's very simple. Hey, Stefan, what's up? My good friend and, and uh, one of my top students, Stefan, here in the chat, which is awesome. So, yeah, I'm still I'm still not going to share a specific mechanic, Stefan. We can talk about that, you know, in the future, you and I in the confidential, because I know that uh, you possess the knowledge to to do those things safely. But I'm not going to share specific things here in the public because I don't know exactly who's watching. I'm also pretty confident you possess the disposition to withstand the trickery and the games and the mental, uh, shall we say, fuckery that the fiction will throw at you. I'm pretty confident you can handle that too. So 
Yeah, I'd have no problem sharing that stuff with you in the private. I'm pretty good, Stefan. Thank you. Pretty good. I'm just trying another one of these live streams where I don't speak until I'm actually asked a question. Other than that, I'm doing some things around the house here. Another thing I'll, I will say about the, the salvage aspect that you can use correct sentence structure for is that, uh, of course, you must possess the correct live life claim of which you are the authority. And having a CPAS C treaty is also a good idea because that, that's the main document that I use and carry with me. Sometimes I will carry my full uh, contingent of ship's papers. Otherwise, I usually, if I'm just going to the store or something, we'll just carry a CPAS C treaty, and that's usually enough if I get into any type of pickles, which I never do anymore. See, that's the thing, you know, that uh, to use the old martial arts analogy that I'm fond of using. Once I actually learned how to fight and was in boxing and pretty confident with my hands and even, you know, learning jujitsu and Muay Thai and a little bit of wrestling. Once I was felt competent with that, I stopped getting into street fights like they just stopped. It's sort of the same thing with this. The more you learn of it the less the fiction messes with you. It just seems like the, the problems just go away. It's pretty amazing, actually. All right. I'm going to mute the mic and wait for another question. Thank you, Stefan. Good to hear from you. Uh, Stefan, if you're still here in the chat, I did have a suggestion for you. I was thinking of this. One of the ways that really expedited the process of me getting closure on this grammar was when I started teaching people in February of 2018. You see, I wasn't going to do that. But my tutor, Raven, was like, hey, the fastest way to really get closure on something and get confident about it is to use it and to teach it to somebody else. And I said, well, wait, I don't think I'm ready because I don't. I don't feel confident, you know, what if I don't have the answers to the questions if a student asks that? And then he said, don't worry about it. He said, I'm here. You can contact me anytime. If you have a question or you run into something you don't know, reach out to me and uh, I'll fill you in. So I started teaching. And man, it really, it really uh, got me over the final hurdle. You know, if I was 90 to 95% there learning the grammar, they got me the other 5% just from teaching it very quickly. So I guess what I'm saying, Stefan, is maybe, you know, something to consider for yourself as a learning tool. Maybe, you know, see if there's people over there that would like to learn from you to learn this grammar, to start learning the basics. I know there's one fellow, uh, I think his name is Jason, but he comes on here on this YouTube channel. His uh, username is Property Geek, and I know he's from over there in your neck of the woods. And um, the video that you and I did together really struck a chord with him because I know he's had a little bit of difficulty in learning in the past, and he really liked the way that you phrase things that you phrase things, not me, you, because you both come from the same piece of land, I suppose. And so that, that just, you know, popped into my mind. I'm like, man, if Stefan started teaching over there, it's just the same way with like my student, Colon Ricardo. There are certain folks that would learn better from him than from me. Everybody has a different style of teaching, different way of speaking. And of course, it's better to choose a teacher you vibe with than one that you don't. So just a thought to consider maybe teaching a friend or two. Maybe when you go out and somebody's interested in it or something, say, hey, let's go back over here and uh, I'll tell you all about this 
I'll take 60 minutes to explain this to you if you're interested. It's much better to do it face to face too. Easier, I should say. It's much easier and efficient to do it face to face. But uh, it's just a thought that I had. Mandag is simply Monday in Norwegian. Mandag is simply Monday in Norwegian. That's all that is. Hello, Pascal. Uh, no, I don't have a preferred font. Whatever reads the best. Sometimes if I'm typing uh, a large document, a long document, and depending upon the audience, I will use a font that can pack a lot of letters into small spaces, like I think one's called Garamound is good for that. But other than that, I just use the most easily readable, which are usually the most common ones that they offer. Sometimes I'll use New Times Roman just as a joke. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just usually use the, what do you call them? The default fonts. I don't really get into ornate fonts or anything like that unless, uh, you know, unless I'm doing a thumbnail or something like that. But for document contract postal vessel court venues, I usually keep it pretty straightforward. Don't get fancy. I don't get fancy with it. And I certainly don't use anything that appears to be similar to cursive writing, handwriting, or italics. See this guy? He doesn't want to be held right now. He's the newest addition to our family, and his name is Hector Oscar Pablo Pancho Chapito Papito Escobar. One, uh, one other area of study not related to correct sentence structure that uh, I've been doing for the past several years is study, uh, studying Native European history. As, uh, as far as I know, that's where my heritage is. I'm basically studying what, what's known as paganism, what they also call Norse mythology, and things like that. And I've found, as many of you may know, my wife is uh, First Nations Native American Algonquin Mohawk, very similar to the Native Americans from North America. The European, the way that, uh, you know, the homesteading, the living off the land at one with nature, at one with your ancestors, so on and so forth, until the conquering Christians came. Which, when you say the word Christian, that just basically means it's a subset of Judaism, uh, all beholden to the first five books of the Bible, which we'll call the Torah. But I'm not going to go into that. Point I'm making is, that's why sometimes you'll see Norwegian words in what I say, or I mean my titles and things like that. It's just reflective of my interest in the uh, history of the Native Europe. I do have a, me a message 
if for uh colon spencer hyphen david colon miller colon space field an individual that i broke bulk with some time ago and told them that if they contacted me again i would construe it as harassment well as I thought, they contacted me again, asking for my help once again, because they failed in the foreign vessel and dry dock, trying to use correct sentence structure, saying that the judge didn't recognize the flag and blah, 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 which is exactly what I say is going to happen when you don't have closure on your grammar, when you don't know the flag mechanics. Because in order to know the flag mechanics, you have to know the grammar mechanics. And Spencer does not have closure on the grammar. So, I mean, there could have been many contributing factors to why he failed. But one of which, I'm 100% sure, is his lack of closure on the grammar. So, Spencer, if you're listening, you have to learn the grammar first. I've been telling you this for years, but it ain't going to come from me, bro. Too much water under the bridge, and I'm just not going to, uh, I'm just not going to deal with that type of chaos in my life anyways. Everybody has to carry their own water. So that's the reason. You got to have closure on the grammar first. And another thing I'll say, of course, a judge in a foreign vessel and dry dock is not going to recognize the grammar flag or the grammar because it's not theirs. They don't use it. That's not their jurisdiction. Whoever's using it, it's their jurisdiction. And the only way they can hold that jurisdiction is if they have closure on the grammar, which you don't. I don't know how many times I got to say that. I guess this is one more time to add to the numerous, multiple times I've said this. So, Spencer, if you're listening, that's my guess as to why you failed. Got to get closure on the grammar. All right, thank you. And by the way, folks, just a reminder, these live streams, these Q&A live streams where I don't speak until someone asks a question, it's just to sort of give the listener or the watcher a firsthand experience with what it means to say what you put in is what you get out. If you're watching and you're not asking questions, then you're probably not getting anything out of it. Literally, this grammar is what you put in is what you get out. What you invest is what you'll get back. Rule one, rule equal. And this is the best, one of the best ways I can think of to teach that lesson. What you put in is what you get out. All right, folks, I'm about to shut this down. So if anybody out there decides to, I guess, as they say, grow a pair and ask a question, you got about five more minutes, and then I'm just going to shut her down. Thank you. You know... I don't know if many of you know this. I only know 25 letters of the alphabet. I don't know why. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one and the easiest one is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the Join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the Join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the Loyalist Contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, You'll get new content, fresh content, 
exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. And this is for the serious students only. And apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. And you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions. And we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.